Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Another busy day. We've got some community functions, so I'm busy doing that today. Running around, talking with people. It's just, you know, I have like certain days of the week that keeps me busy with that kind of stuff. And today's one of them. I want to mention to you, I know some of you don't care. Some of you want to know, but you feel like it's just out of your reach and impossibility. And what I'm speaking of is finding or starting your own community, get, getting people together. And, and that can be very diff different ways. It can look differently. I get it. There's a lot of variations. It is really important. You know that I push that a lot on this channel. That's one of my primary focuses. Um, and even though I'm... I, don't consider myself an expert. We have done a, a pretty bang up job of building out a, a, a pretty large and successful community. A community of communities is really what we have here. We have several small little mags that you know work together in a big you know kind of unit type thing. So uh, I am going to start as I can making videos over on my locals tribe group. Um, yes, it is a paid membership. It's only three dollars a, a month, really. It's not, it's not too much, I don't think, for what you're getting. But I'll be making videos over there, kind of classroom style videos of how to get things started, how to make it work, how to set it up, how to do the meetings, how to organize things, structure, training, just basically as much as I can from what we have done over the last almost three years now. Uh, give to you without getting into our own operational security. You know, they're, they're not that there's anything top secret, but there's just maybe things that we don't want to talk about. But as much as I can, I will be making videos over there talking about that stuff. I know that some of you just don't think that that's worthwhile. Uh, some of you aren't interested in it. Some of you don't think it's ever going to happen. Um, some of you, have, I've gotten some feedback people saying, well, the word tribe makes it sound like it's a cult. No, it's not like that at all. Not a cult. Uh, it not, it not even anywhere close to that. Uh, I like to say it's just kind of how things used to be, where people work together and, and survive together and help each other out. And that's really what we need to be doing. So anyways, be looking for that over on the locals uh, members group. Uh, where you and there's a there, there'll be a link down below if you want to go over there and join. I saw uh, I didn't even get to watch the whole thing, I've been so busy. I was waiting on something, so I watched a few minutes of it. But Zach Bauer over at, at an American Homestead, which is an excellent YouTube channel, he's a good friend of mine, and I would encourage you to go watch the video that he put out. It's something as to the name of. Uh, the title is uh, An Economic Collapse May Be the Best That We Can Hope For. And I think that he's definitely on to something. Uh, as this goes, you start hearing more and more people, more, more mainstream, say, well, you know, maybe it'll be a recession. Maybe it'll be some kind of downturn. Maybe it'll be this. I, I think they're saying that because they know it's going to be worse. They know it's going to be much worse than probably what anyone really is, is wanting and so they're trying to soften the blow. We, Our government and the officials and these world elitists, uh, and I use that name loosely, uh, they do the same thing. They do all this, well, you know, Russia isn't really going to do anything and well, if Russia goes in, it'll be just a, a little bit of something and well, the, you know, Ukraine isn't going to, you know, try to move into Russian territory. Well, you know, Ukraine isn't in, in back and forth, China, Taiwan, all this kind of stuff. The dollar really isn't being devalued. Well, uh, it's going to be broken up into different economic blocks. That's what they're saying now. The point is, is I think that things are going to get a lot worse. Uh, the, today, Joe Biden and many other world leaders of the United Nations, uh, Joe Biden gave a, a very big speech on gibberish. Um, half of it, I and mean, he was so slurred, you couldn't understand half of what he was saying. But out of what he said in gibberish, he said that uh, he's asked Congress for uh, $25 billion to be dumped into the International Monetary Fund to help, you know, all of this stuff going on. Um, Zelensky is there, he's there, and he's going to Congress to beg for more money. I guess Congress is looking at $21 billion in additional funding to uh, Ukraine 
We've topped $33 trillion. We're increasing our debt at a rate of one and a half to three trillion dollars a year now. The the just the, the the interest on the debt is absolutely astronomical. It's like one over a trillion dollars, I think, just in the interest now. The 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 economic problems are quite severe. And I think that they want it that way. They they want a collapse because they're wanting this new age, this new uh, era of financial, you know, systems. Uh, we've heard that from many of these world leaders, that their goal is to have a, a new era, uh, meaning something totally different, meaning digital, global, uh, uh, being able to know every bit of a part of your life and what you're spending your money on, the, the absolute control of your of your spending power, all this kind of stuff. You know, we've, we've said, many of us for many years have said, you know, well, we'll, we'll get them with our, our power of the purse, you know, the power of spending, you know, our, using the power of our, our buying power to, to control things, to uh, boycott things or stuff like that. That's going to be, you know, not really happening anymore. Um, controlling what you do with your lives. All that's coming with the financial collapse. And it's all happening at the same time with this buildup of war. Uh, I'm still... I still don't buy the whole story of this F-35. I, I could be totally wrong. Maybe it is just an honest problem, but they're they're looking at possible hacking. Um, there's just a lot of weird things that don't make any sense. I mean, this thing was missing for over a day, which that on its own is strange. Um, the video shows that it went down uh, near a farm, and I understand it's rural area where it went down, but it's not remote area. If you look on a map, there's farmhouses every mile or so. I mean, there, it's not its not like there's dozens and dozens and dozens of miles, you know, from civilization and, or any person. There's people around. It's just rural. And no one saw that. There's a video floating around. I can't guarantee that it's real. It's probably fake. Um, I just anymore assume that everything is fake until it's proven. Uh, but it shows a, what looks to be a plane crashing in the field. And if that's the case, if someone got the video of it, and even if they didn't, just the fact that it went down, you know, at least within the earshot of farms, why did it take so long for them to find it and for someone to report it? I mean, I mean, I live out in rural and, and actually kind of remote for the most part area. And I assure you, if a plane goes down anywhere in a few miles, we're gonna hear it and we're and people's gonna be reporting it. People's gonna be calling the sheriff's department, fire department, all that. Did that happen? I don't know. It doesn't sound like it. It sounds like they just found it by flying over it. No one reported it. it none of it. None of it makes sense at this point. So either, it either didn't happen, or it happened differently, or they're just not telling us the full story. And probably it's a little bit of all that. The stuff going on with with China and Taiwan. It's it's building over there. Taiwan has been reporting on a daily basis the amount of ships and planes that are circling their country. Uh, I think that they're just trying to get them to a point that they're just used to it, it's not a big deal, they're, they're crying wolf, they're crying wolf, and then finally we strike. Um, North Korea is becoming a bigger player in all this, and a lot of people still roll their eyes at it, but I'm telling you, I think they're probably one of the more dangerous ones because they're just kind of that wild card. Um, Armenia and Azerbaijan is about ready to pop off into a big war, which will be a big proxy war for the United States and Russia. It already has become that because each side is training with them and giving them stuff. We can just go on and on and on. Uh, relations in the Middle East are always in a topsy-turvy, you know, shaken thing. And at some point, that's going to probably get going. Uh, the de-dollarization, you know, buying oil from Saudi Arabia outside of the dollar, that's that's a, a bad deal for the United States and it's becoming a pretty normal thing. Uh, pandemics, yeah, the, Joe Biden says that he can guarantee there'll be a second one. That's why he's wanting billions of dollars. And you know, all the stuff that we can't talk about with that. Censorship is on the rise. Uh, big YouTubers are getting canceled simply because people make accusations of them. Maybe the accusations are correct, but they're just accusations at that point. And so they get canceled, book deals get shut down, all kinds of stuff. We're seeing doctors have their bank accounts canceled and shut down. 
and so many people and there's a lot more I mean I could I could rattle on for probably an hour or two naming off this kind of stuff the thing is is there's still so many people that believe that we still live in just normal America everything's good and normal it's just it's a little crazy right now but it'll get better and things will be all right I, I I don't know what opium you're on, but I don't see that that's happening. I think we have to be realistic and, and, and realize that an economic collapse or even a World War III may be more of the hopeful things that could happen. I think that the, the reality of what really could happen is far worse than those things. And that's why I push so hard and I get all kinds of nasty things said about me, which just don't hurt my feelings one bit, but all kinds of nasty things said about me, um, about, oh, you're trying, you're scaring people, you're getting all these views, just, that's why you're scaring people, you get all these views, all this stuff. No, honestly, it, it really is, um, because the views aren't there like you think they are, and neither is the income. It's really about getting people ready, getting them to wake up, um, why my family have devoted so much to our local community because we want to see people that are ready for what's about to happen and you can keep your head in the sand all you want you're not going to be safe you're just going to feel good for a while it's like a drug it doesn't fix the problem you just kind of feel good while you're on it or you can get your head out of the sand, dust yourself off, and realize it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hurtful, painful. It's going to be filled with lots of sacrifice. But the end outcome is going to be a whole lot better than if you kept your head in the sand. And that's really where people need to realize, yeah, none of this is going to be easy. I'm not telling you that try community building and self-sufficient living and prepping and homesteading and all that kind of stuff is easy. It's most certainly not. But the end outcome is better. Serving God the Father and His Son, Yeshua Jesus, that's not easy. And it's going to get worse and worse for you. But the end outcome is way better, folks. This is where we need to be. Are you going to take the easy road, which ends to certain, you know, death and destruction? Or are you going to take the hard road and possibly have a chance to be one of those that endures to the end? That's really my overall message, and it's been my message for years now. It hasn't really changed. Uh, and you need to be getting ready for that. Because, yeah, I think Zach Bauer's correct. I think it's hopeful that we only have a financial collapse. That, that's, that's, the, that's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is pretty bad, folks. It's just watching Rome burn. It's time to get your houses in order. To prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Stop playing around. This ain't playing house time anymore. No more hobbying and LARPing. It's time to get serious. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video.